Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here, I thank you for joining me. And if you are returning, thank you for showing up again. So today I'm going to work with a very soft palette, a soft pink palette, with a couple of striking pink colors, a gold and black cell activator, and we're going to work on this 10 by 20 canvas. Now my paints are all mixed the same way. I'm going to pop an image up of the two products that I mixed together to make a pouring medium. I then put some paint in a cup. How much? I would say for these little containers from the Dollar Tree, I put about a tablespoon of paint to two tablespoons of my homemade pouring medium. Mix it up and then if I feel it's too thick, I'll add some water. I, however, did not feel it was too thick. We're swiping with some thicker paints today and I wanted them to be thick, a little bit thicker than normal. So as long as you get enough paint off the canvas, you should be okay with cracking. Now, I say should because if you have your paints so thick that they're not flowing off of the stick even, then they're just way too thick but um you can definitely get away with using thicker paints when we see the bloom technique done or a swipe with you know thicker paints it's fine i've done tons of them and they don't crack you just have to make sure you get enough paint off of the canvas and that unfortunately takes practice uh you have to practice you have to experiment you have to pay attention when you're tilting how much paint is left on the canvas. You basically, when you're done tilting, you do not want to be able to see the canvas, but you don't want, you know, depth, we'll say, of paint. You want the canvas to just be coated with color. That's how the paints are mixed. These bigger containers, they're from Loli Vefe. These are five ounce containers, and I like these because they can hold a lot more. I can make my colors in bulk and then <clears throat> they don't run out so quick. Um, so these colors here are new prism pour colors. These are new acrylic paints from Color Art that work like any other acrylic paint. So we're using the Platinum Rose and can't remember the name of this one, but I'll put it in the description. I'll put all of the names in the description for you. This is Pink Azalea, a primary element. Sweet Pea, a primary element. And Bougainvillea, a primary element. My cell activator is Deep Gold by Amsterdam with a couple of drops of bright gold from Golden mixed with Australian Floetrol. And the black is Golden's Carbon Black, the heavy body tube paint. And if you were looking to buy Floetrol with my coupon last week and saw it was sold out, it's back in stock so I will put the link for that in the description below. This is what I use. I put some paint in the cup and I don't measure. I just keep adding this flow trawl until the consistency is the same as my paints. It flows off of the stick, leaves a mound on a mound and then slowly disappears, okay? Okay, so my base paint is actually Black Onyx from Walmart. It's called Color Place, the brand. But I added a little bit of Golden's Titanium White in it just to get it to a gray color. I want to do a gray and soft pink and gold palette. That's what I'm envisioning. So I'm going to just pour it right down. Now, there's nothing else added. No water, no nothing. Just the paint. From the can and a little bit of golden paint okay we're just gonna tilt back and forth until the entire canvas is coated okay and that's gonna act as a let's think of it as like an ice skating ring so when you put the colors on and you swipe them around and you go to tilt, it's gonna help those colors flow around on the canvas. So I'm gonna torch to pop bubbles. It is perfectly fine to torch house paint as long as you go quick. 
You don't want to concentrate in one area for very long. Okay, so now I'm going to put down my colors. Um, I think I'm going to put down this beautiful bougainvillea first. And I'm just going to make a puddle, I think, and kind of just... Let me think about this. I'm right-handed. See, this is something that can screw you up. If you pour here and you're you're going to swipe and you're right-handed, you're going to have to go this way so it may be awkward. So you want to start over here. Little things like that matter. So I'm just going to lay my colors down in a puddle. I'm putting the bougainvillea down first, followed by the lighter colors. All right, so now I'm ready to swipe, but before I do that, I want to pop any air bubbles that may have been in these colors or have risen out of this base coat again, because if you can get those air bubbles, you'll get a lot less specks in your painting, in your finished piece. Sometimes you see white specks, that's from air bubbles popping. It, if you have a white base paint down and you do a pour and a swipe, and it dries and you see all these white specks, <clears throat> excuse me, that's from the air bubbles in the colors popping and you're exposing the white underneath. My spatula, I'm gonna put down some black first. Whatever color you put down first will end up on top. So because I want the gold to be under the black, I'm gonna be putting the black down first, just like so. And then I'm going to spread it out with my little color art spoon. Spread it out so it's a nice even layer. And then with the gold, I'm going to kind of just drizzle the gold in. I'm just going to kind of drizzle it throughout the black, just like that. Ready? And then we're gonna just do one big crazy swipe. Just like that. And then we're gonna let it do its thing. Gonna let the cells come up. And if they don't come up, then we're gonna aid them a little bit and do another swipe. But I have a feeling they're gonna come up. This side here, you can see it's kind of dead, so we can help that a bit. And then we can always add more color down and re-swipe if we feel like it's not good enough. We could also put color on the swiper itself. And swipe. But you can see they're coming, they're coming. Sometimes they're just a little delayed. You know, they're, they're not motivated. You gotta kind of motivate them, just like me. <laughs> So we can take this and go like this and swipe some more color into that. So I just continue swiping some color in and then I'm going to be getting ready to do my little experiment here soon. I want to put my colors into a cup and do a ribbon pour over the entire painting. Now you may say to yourself, why would you ever disturb that beautiful pattern in the center? Well, we have to tilt. And again, it was an experiment. If I want just a celled pattern like that, I could always get one. But my point in doing these videos is to give you, the viewer, artist, 
different options when creating your artwork. So I'm just going to let you continue to watch this part here and I will be right back. So now it's time to tilt. You're gonna wanna take this really slow. Now I have this portion right here sped up, but in a minute I will be showing you exactly how slow those paints are going. I believe I have this sped up like maybe seven times faster, but again, you'll be seeing here in a minute just how slow I'm actually tilting. So here we go, real time tilting. It barely looks like the paint is even moving. That's how slow I'm going. And that's how you ensure that you keep a composition that you like. You take your time, go really, really slow and keep your eye on the design. See what the pattern of the cells are looking like. What way are they moving? Are they getting distorted? If they are, turn it back around and go the opposite way. If you take your time with it, it will come out the way that you want it to. So I'm going to finish tilting here and then I am going to swipe in a little bit more color and then I am going to go buck wild, baby. <laughs> I'm gonna take this palette knife of mine and I'm gonna swipe right through it. I know, ouchy, but <laughs> I wanted to do my experiment, so here we go. I'm gonna do a couple of big swipes to kind of, you know, get that pattern broken up. And then I'm gonna come in with my paints just simply layered into a cup. Because these paints are so thick, you're gonna need to take a stick or a spoon or, or something and kind of mix them up a couple of times. Swirl them by hand in the cup. I tried pouring up from really high and it, the colors just did not mix together enough. So you're gonna to wanna to mix them together so that they pour out and look like a ribbon. So if you pay attention here to the black ribbon I just poured out, you're gonna notice that cells start developing. So if you want to do a ribbon pour with the Bloom recipe, you most absolutely can. There is just something so striking about those ribbons when you pour them on top of a canvas. They just, Add so much dimension and interest. They're really, really pretty. So now just like when you tilt with any other painting, you have to watch the composition of your ribbons when you're tilting. So I'm going to tilt my canvas around until I'm happy with it. And then I'm gonna bring you in for a close up. Wow, I think I have found a favorite new technique. I really, oh my. Oh. I'm actually speechless for once. And that just, you know, it doesn't happen often, but it does. I love the flow of the paint in this one and I love the colors. It's so hard for you to see them on camera though. When the daylight was hitting it, that color, that light pink was looking like a fluorescent peach almost. It's just such a pretty color, which I bet you light gray and peach would make a really pretty color palette. I may try that one, but anyway, here it is. I'm just, like I said, I love it. 
I did my little experiment with the ribbons having the cell activator in there and it really worked out. You saw there it was creating pretty cells. So I'm happy that that worked. I'm going to be trying another experiment in the next video and I'm going to show you the dry results for that one to make sure that it works right. But I'm going to be testing something out that will hopefully make doing this bloom technique a whole lot easier. So fingers crossed that works. I'm not going to say what it is yet because I want to make sure it works first. So I want to thank you for joining me. I want to thank those that showed up for my live event on Sunday night. I had a grand old time. If you want a prize, be patient with me. I will get those out to you ASAP. I want to thank those that made a donation for Christmas to the channel. That was very kind of you and very much appreciated. If you are new here and you enjoyed the video, I do a lot of tutorials with step-by-step -step instructions, mixing, all of that. I have a ton under the playlist option of the channel. Please consider subscribing and click that notification bell to be notified for when I release a future video. So I want to wish you a happy night, happy day, happy morning, wherever you are in the world. Have a happy, happy day. And I love you all. Thank you for joining me and happy pouring. <laughs>